just jump jump right into the book reviews for today. Yeah. So I've read some books. Jesse's read some books. How about you go first? Pick one, and then I'll do one, and then cool. We'll go back and forth. Uh, I will start with uh, Genghis Khan and the making of the modern world. Uh, I'll look up some stats for it if you want to. Many of you may uh, be familiar with with Genghis Khan or Timogen, Um but that was his real name, Timogen? Yeah, that was his, his Mongolian first name. name. Yeah, I don't even. I don't know why his name changed. I honestly can't remember. Um, so I read this book. I also audioed a bit of it on a long drive I had down to Florida to visit some friends. Um, so half listened, half read it. Um, it was a really good book. I think I gave it a four out of five. Um, whenever you pull up the stats, just spout them off. But super important figure in the history of this entire world. Um, I'm not going to go super into detail, but I think the biggest thing that I did learn you know, when you hear Genghis Khan and you hear about his empire, a lot of what you're going to hear is just like them raping and pillaging the entire planet, essentially, the known world. Of like just, some percentage of how many people. Yeah. I feel like everybody's heard that stat. Like 10% yeah. of people are right. descendants of Genghis Khan. Yeah, I mean, he conquered the vast majority of the known world at the time. And he, there was a lot of death. There was a lot of pillaging that they did. Um, but... A cool thing that I did learn and take away from this book is that there was a lot more to that. When he did go and, you know, decimate a society, he would rebuild it. He would make them all literate if they weren't before. He would put in, like, some pretty solid, like, I mean, I don't want to say they're all solid, but he would put in some, at the very least, efficiently running uh, government, you know, governments in these places um, yeah. and practices that made people more efficient. Um, he didn't make people change religions, right? No. So he would go in. That was a big thing. Yeah. He would go in and why their empire was so vast. I think that's one of the reasons why. Yeah. Um, he would go in and, um, you know, take over a place. He'd, he'd leave emissaries there to kind of run things, but he would let people have freedom of religion, freedom of speech. He was basically like, look, as long as I'm getting these resources and I'm running things, taxes probably or whatever, you're good. Um, now don't get me wrong again. They did kill a lot of people. And if he would, there was, there were times when they would go, you know, take over a place. It'd be a long siege. A lot of people would get killed. They'd put in their own, you know, people to kind of run things. Then they would leave, and then that city would revolt after the army was gone because they're thinking, oh, they're just on a war path. They're not coming back this way. Dude, the second Genghis Khan got word, turn around, go back, redecimate, reinstall, and be like, all right, now I've done it to you twice. I will do it a third time, so I hope you learned your lesson. So don't get me wrong. Lots of violence. Um... And, and that was a, it was a big cultural thing. I mean, he came from the steppes, and it was like a very tribal thing of them just murdering each other to be in charge. Yeah. Um, and he kind of just took a lot of that to the entire world. So it was a good book. Um, it definitely is a little dense. Um, what did you give it again? I think I gave it a 4. So it's a 4.04 4 on Goodreads with 70,000 ratings, mm. uh, almost 4,000 reviews. Yeah, so... You did rate it for, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it's definitely important to know about Genghis Khan to a degree, I do believe. Um, a lot of what uh, you're getting is is off this document they found called The Secret History. And there is a lot of conjecture around this document. Mm. So a lot of what's in this book, and he, again, as a good author does, he makes it clear when some stuff is, mm, this might not be exactly what happened, or here's the five different you know, theories that have been said throughout history of what they think might have happened. Like even Genghis Khan's death, there's a lot of controversy around it. His firstborn or potentially not even his own biological son. Um, I, I don't know if it was or him. Was he before? I can't remember, honestly. Don't ask me questions because I'm not going to know the answer. Um, there's, there's a lot of things that they just don't know for sure. They're not totally sure if Genghis Khan died of natural causes or if someone put a pillow over his head in his sleep. They're not sure about his son who was originally going to take over that most people believe at this point was not even his bi biological son. They think it was his first wife's biological son and not Genghis Khan's. But regardless of all that, um, a lot of it's conjecture. A lot of it's, you know, we're kind of filling in what we think might have happened. But very good, very interesting. Just the cultural stuff surrounding him is just very, very interesting. You know, that whole, you know, honor and... What I say goes um, because I am the father, because I am the patriarch, um, and not even in a super patriarchal sense the way that 
that word has been commandeered nowadays. But, um, yeah, really good read. I think it just kind of opened my eyes to the fact that, again, something that I really knew nothing about other than, I mean, if I heard the name Genghis Khan, I just thought, oh, that guy that, you know, destroyed half the world and took yeah. over it for a time. And then um, the other big thing that I learned, and this is something I'm starting to see a lot more in the history that I read, is that after his death, that's kind of the big thing with these larger-than-life figures that create these empires, is that oftentimes they can manage pretty well. They can keep things under wraps while they are alive because they are this figure that people look to and almost see as like, you know, this yeah. Christ-like or whatever like once they're gone. figure. But once they're gone, the, all the people around them that have either feared them or respected them and loved them, now that that person is gone... It's like just a, I mean, it's just a power grab. It's a vacuum. That's why communism will only ever work in theory. It depends on who the leader is. Yeah, it could work for 50 years with somebody, but. Yeah, but then yeah. Putin shows up and it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> um, not that it worked before Putin. That's not the point I was just trying to make. Um, but yeah, you're right. Uh, so it's just, that's another very interesting thing. You just kind of see the the flaw in something like communism is that, yeah, and not to say that everyone under Genghis Khan's rule thought, oh, this works great. I'm sure some of them hated it. Don't yeah. get me wrong. But to look at it from a historical standpoint, you can see how there was efficiency and he did accomplish a lot of yeah. what he set out to do and did it very well. And once he was gone, his descendants just went absolutely wild, started yeah. killing each other and started changing the way things were going to work. And, you know, it all fell apart. Um, so, yeah, that's Genghis Khan. Didn't want to stick on that one too long. It's two hundred and seventy um, pages. I saw too. So yeah, easy read. Would you recommend it though? Um, if someone's interested in Genghis Khan, is it a quick enough read to? Where oh, for sure. If you're you interested in learning info? about Genghis Khan, definitely read this book. It's super short. It's very comprehensive. Um, you get actually a lot of his younger backstory too, just about his mom, um, you know, his stepbrother, all this kind of different stuff that kind of formed who he ended up being yeah. and informed some of the decisions and policies that he ended up having later in life. So very good book. Um, four out of five for me. It's a New York Times bestseller by Jack Weatherford, um, who is a good writer. He, he did a very good job of like keeping you engaged in this book. But I will say if you're not into this section of history, especially like my dad, for instance, he's not he's typically not inclined to read about something that's about history this far back because mm -hmm. of that very reason. Things like the Roman Empire, a lot of what we know... It's all conjecture. Very conjectury. And I keep saying conjectury. It's not a word. Um, it's not. Conjectury? No. I'm putting a Y on the end of conjecture, and I don't think that's Maybe right. an adjective, dude. Yeah, you know me. Um, so, yeah, if, if you do want... If you are interested in this or you do like this kind of history, it's definitely a great read for that. If you're not and you're more into things that are a little more, not even modern, but just closer to where we just have so much more information, even like American history. Um, it may not be for you, but, you know, check it out. It's not a long read, so even if you're not into it, you know, you can always put it down. But, uh, yeah, that's Genghis Khan and the Making of the Modern World by Jack Weatherford. Um, the next book I'm going to talk about.